Alright, new Logic album. I'm not gonna go through the whole rundown of my history with Logic. If you want that, go watch the first three minutes of my No Pressure review. I'll just pick up after that and say that I still think No Pressure is fine but overrated. Vital Days was alright, but I still wasn't a big fan of it. Except there was Sayonara, which made me get a bit retrospective on Logic's career and my personal thoughts on it. I'm a lover of the old mixtapes, especially the Young Sinatra series, but I'm now the same age he was when he made the first one, and it has made me completely rethink his discography. I still love the mixtapes, I relate to them more than ever, but I do get where his career is at now. Like, I might not be a fan of No Pressure of Vinyl Days, but it's clear to me, especially with the latter, that Logic's just making the music that he used to listen to as a kid, and that's cool. I also used to be really harsh on him, especially when Confessions of a Dangerous Mind dropped, but nowadays, I also get it, especially when he's openly admitting to selling out. <laughs> Look, there's always gonna be bits and pieces of past me, and Mind of Young Artanis is fucking giddy at this. <laughs> but also, like, I was a teenager throughout the release of BT2 to Code EM, so I didn't really understand jack shit about anything, was really hot-headed at the time. I still don't like those works, but I don't really care about them as much as I used to. Anyways, with all that being said, College Park is the new Logic album, so obviously I'm gonna review it, and luckily for me, I get to make a track-by-track -track review, which is my favorite kind of video to make, so let's waste no time and get straight into it. <laughs> Through the Universe is a nice opening track introducing the College Park story at the end, stating that the song was a dream that 2011 Logic just had right before heading off to a show. The acoustic guitar riff is nice, I like Logic singing on the chorus, his verse isn't bad, but it's not great. It's incredibly short, nothing's really said, and the pitch effect on it is gonna take some time to get used to. I will say the pause and then you're a thought, gets a laugh out of me every time. Riz's verse is good. I've never been a big fan of Wu-Tang. It took me until 2021 to listen to 36 Chambers, and I liked it, but nothing really memorable stuck out to me. It's just not my kind of rap, but I did like them on Wu-Tang Forever, and I do like Method Man's verse on Triumph. I have nothing to compare Riz's verse to, but like I said, it's good. I genuinely thought this man somehow figured out how to rhyme book with the beginning of claustrophobic. <laughs> Overall, it's alright. Nothing replayable for me, but it's not bad. Wake Up was the lead single, and I honestly didn't really care for it. First of all, the chorus is kind of garbage, and while it only appears twice, the first time around is so long that it's, like, trying to ruin the song for me. I also wasn't really a big fan of the synth. It sounds like a grimy sea bat to me. <laughs> Logic's verse is pretty good, but it continued to have the same problem I had with No Pressure and Vinyl Days, which is just him talking about the same shit that I already know. I know that Logic grew up in the hood. I know that Logic grew up around drugs. I know Logic grabbed the gat. I know Logic bust tables at Wingstop. I've heard the mixtapes countless of times. I know this shit already, and I would just wish that he would talk about something else. With that being said, the song's grown on me a little bit since I first heard it. Like, it still takes a while to get past that first chorus, but the beat ends up swapping out that synth with these nice relaxing pads and airy keys. And there are a couple bars that breaks out of the past and talks about his current life, like going back to where he grew up and thinking about what could have happened had he not blown up, which is nice. Overall, I would say it's one of the weakest songs in the album, in my opinion. It's not bad, but it's just kind of a skip for me. There's nothing really here to keep me listening to the song. Day's a good day, good day, good day. You know Alright, so Lightsabers was probably the most anticipated track for me because it is solely a Logic and Castro song. And to set up some context, I thought that the Castroverse on Vinyl Days was a massive missed opportunity. Like, we hadn't gotten a Logic X Castro song in nine years at that point, and he finally comes back for a nine bar verse among two other features. I just wished it would have been solely Logic and Castro spitting back and forth like the good old days, and when I heard he was going to be on College Park, that sparked my interest. Then we got the track list, and we got a song that's only Logic and Castro, so I was really excited, but given the fact that the last time I let myself get excited over a Logic album, we got Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, I was still weary. Well, we didn't get Logic and Castro spitting back and forth. 
but we did get something better. The song starts with a Juicy J intro hyping up Logic, and then Logic comes in with a pretty catchy chorus and a pretty good verse and includes great flows and vocal melodies. I don't know why, but hearing him talk about how he gets working a 9 to 5 to pay your bills but don't give up your dreams for it just feels really nice to hear. Then the song switches up into this jazz rap beat with the most catchiest piano chops I've ever heard in my life. I cannot help myself but bounce to them, dear lord. Logic comes busting in with these fucking incredibly catchy flow and rhymes. I'm the main motherfucker, you're an NPC is a fucking bar. And then the verse transitions into the bridge where Logic brings in another really catchy vocal melody. A little bit of a convo between himself with the panning between the two feeling nice. Especially when it goes back and forth during Just For Talking To Me. Then Logic goes into saying not to do rap for the money and the fame. Which initially I started thinking, ah, this is another fucking hypocrite moment. Why can't you just acknowledge that Cody M was trash and filled with you flexing about money and bitches? And then he acknowledges that he did it for the money and the fame. To then start a second verse where he actually dives into that criticism, how it's different because he was already in the game, but in the end he did at one point do it for the money and the fame, out of being tired of not being recognized and because he was broke and just needed the money. It's genuinely so weird to me hearing Logic be so open about this after six albums where he went back and forth between flexing the money, fame, and bitches, and saying that none of that matters. And he continues this throughout the album, which we'll get to those when we do, but yeah, just hearing Logic actually admit to selling out is weird, but I also do get it now. Then after a third verse where he reminisces on the past, and honestly, it just sounds really good, so I'm fine with it. It then transitions really well into Castro's verse where he serves as a stand-in for them back in 2011 dreaming about making it big in rap. And just like back in the day, Castro's fucking great and the verse is really good. The song overall is easily my favorite on the album, mostly because of that piano, but also because this is the first of many times when this album gives off a vibe of a matured version of the mixtapes, and honestly, I really love it. God, it feels so weird actually feeling joy listening to a Modern Logic album. Also, that transition in the outro skit is fucking clean as hell. Anime loving, video game playing, put that shit in my raps, people like what the fuck is you- Clone Wars 3 is another pretty good track. Not a favorite, but not a skip either. The beat's pretty good, Logic's verse is pretty good as well. I like there's only 12 notes to a scale, nothing's original under the sun, nothing new to unveil, it's like perfection, it's unattainable. Or the vocal melody that he brings during anime loving, video game playing. Or stay close to the Iron Man like John Favreau killing shit up, Avada Kedavra. Like, I love those nerd culture bars from the mixtape, and I honestly- I honestly cannot remember the last time I heard him in a Logic song since, like, Bobby Tarantino 1. <laughs> I could be entirely wrong, but do remember I've blocked out the whole second half of his discography. <laughs> But for real though, it's a nice little rapidy rap verse where Logic goes over how much he used to look up to his idols and wish he was them until eventually he didn't, which is pretty nice. We then spend the whole second half of the track with a skit where they buy burgers. It's not terrible. The only funny part was Lenny's fat nibba fantasy. I will say though, anytime there's a woman in one of these skits, it's so obvious that it's Logic just doing a voice that... It's honestly just kind of funny, but a little awkward at the same time. Overall, Clone Wars 3 is alright. I'll listen to the verse and enjoy it all the way through, then skip when the skit starts playing. I will say though, long skits like this make it damn near impossible to put into a playlist, which I get that this album is supposed to be one of those front-to-back listens, but still, I don't know. It'd be nice to have like a version of the album without the skits, or at the very least, the skits be separate tracks. But other than that, not a bad song. Yeah, they know me round the world, but the flow is still underground. Only booze I get on stage is when I sit the fuck. Okay, this one was wild on my first listen. First of all, I desperately need to know why the song is called Red Pill. Regardless of the seven, I just need to know why you named the song Red Pill in 2023. I mean, I'm just saying, it probably should have been called Blue Pill since the verse starts off being woke. <laughs> Go away, you are not to speak. For real though, this song goes like all over the place and I have no idea how to feel about it. The beginning of the B has these nocturnal vibes that remind me of the second part of the art of peer pressure with Logic rapping about his anxiety and how doctors want to treat it with medication, but he decides to instead treat it head on with therapy. Going into how he views what the medication does to you where the beat then starts getting very eerie and weary. Logic then switches it back up into normal rap shit, throwing out rhymes and punchlines back to back. I like the line about the m m concert and doing Madison Square Garden again just to bring out Wu-Tang Clan. Saving society through lyrics I wrote is a pretty cool line and then there's this Futurama line, which I can't help but like because it's Futurama, but at the same time, want the dick and I'm a bender, if she ugly I return to sender is a bar that sounds so weird coming from Logic. <laughs> 
My vision go over their head like Ku Klux Klan sheets, talk shit, drink bleach. What the fuck? When I first heard this song, I had to pause just to recoup from what the fuck I just heard. Listening to it now, I don't really understand why. <laughs> I think shit just gets so wild at the end that I just needed a moment. Overall, it's a good song. It might just take some time to get used to, though. Logic known for telling stories like a playwright. Stay black, brothers and sisters, is how we stay right. Playwright is a nice little calm, vibey track that I can definitely see being thrown into my stoner playlist. I thought the Midnight Marauders line was in reference to his song, but I guess it could also be the Tribe album. If it's a reference to the Tribe album, I have no thoughts because I've never listened to it. If it's his own song, then I'm just a little confused because I don't really see the resemblance. So maybe it is about the Tribe album. Aren't you nervous you aren't the best, I never even thought of it, is another interesting line. Because it makes me think of all the other times, including on this album, where he tries to say that he's the best. I mean, I guess it still works because it's specifically on being nervous that he isn't, but given how he constantly says he is, would mean he never thinks that he isn't. But at the same time, it's hard to say that you're the best when Supermarket and Cody M are in your discography. Other than that, Playwright isn't bad, not really memorable. Like I said, I could definitely see this playing during a smoke session, but that's pretty much it. We get another skit where Logic is telling Castro how to be a hype man and referencing All I Do, which then transitions into the next track. Well, good thing I brought beat CDs. You did? Duh. Lenny, throw this in. I'm trying to freestyle. Who going first? Yeah, suicide. Yo, they call me DJ Boss Player. The hottest DJ in college. Bro. I laughed my ass off on my first listening because that was literally just Good Kid Mad City. Like, that was literally just the transition from Bish on Chem My Vibe to Backseat Freestyle, and I love it. <laughs> Look, man, it's been 11, 12 years. If you're not used to Logic ripping off Kendrick, then that's your fault. But for real, though, Gaithersburg Freestyle is straight fucking fire. The beat is banging, especially with those 808s. Logic comes in with an incredibly catchy flow like usual for this album. And while it starts out with that everybody style chopping, it's just for the intro, which makes it fine for me. I mean, I never really hated the vocal chopping on everybody, but on my recent listen, I did realize why it was so annoying to other people. But nonetheless, the rest of the verse is good with some really good rhymes, some really good flows, and I'm still not used to hearing Logic say the N-word. <laughs> Remember when that shit was rare as fuck? <laughs> Anyways, can we talk about how fucking slick the transition between Logic and Castro's verse is? I got my stories to slick. I got my stories to rip. Motherfucker, take your pick me out of that lineup. Goddamn. Castro's verse goes hard as usual. We get a big Lembo verse, which I know he was on Kickstyle, but I forgot he was on that song. So to me, I haven't heard this man since Young Jesus. I'm starting to think that rap isn't really something that Lenny cares about. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to insult him, but like, remember Elysium? Correct me if I'm wrong, but did he ever even release anything? <laughs> I think it was like one song and then we were waiting for an EP or an album and it just never happened. But I also say that because both of his verses on this album are like really short. They're not bad and I do enjoy hearing Lenny again, but yeah, it just kind of makes me think. <laughs> Fat Trail takes up most of the song and he's not bad and I do like his verse, but at the same time, He's the only person on here that's not from Maryland, as far as I know, which makes it just kind of weird that he's on here. Then we end with an Ade verse, which, despite him saying in it, I had no idea that this was Phil Ade until writing the script. I haven't heard this man since Are You Ready, and learning that it's actually him, regardless of how short his verse is, makes me so goddamn happy. I cannot explain it. Also, the way that he ends both his verse and the song is just really funny. Life is a bitch, make it sit in my lap. I finished my rap. Also, the song's three minutes and one second. It's a pretty nice touch. Overall, Gaithersburg Freestyle is a fucking banger and one of my favorites from the album, and it's really nice hearing the OG Rat Pack back on the song together. I mean, technically, that's kick style, but this is far better, in my opinion. I'm a musician, I love the art. Should've never let you win from the start. It ain't one man or another, we one in the same. And Scipio has this really nice, catchy beat with Logic coming in with these nice flows, rapping about money and not caring about rhyming, which I personally take as either a reference or possibly a dig towards the I don't give a damn about lyrics line from Don't Be Afraid to Be Different. And I say possibly a dig because Logic immediately follows it up with saying that this isn't the way to think and then he should have never let that side of him in. Well, according to Genius, it's in, but I hear win and I kind of like that more. More. Like, I don't know, when makes it sound like that sellout side of him finally took over? Or that he was referencing Marty Randolph. Wait, why was Marty not on this album at all? Like, imagine for a moment if Marty was on this album where Logic is constantly talking about how he sold out. 
That would have been cool. Logic talks about taking other people's opinions too seriously, and I don't know why, but the way he says POV. Say if you was me, you would do it differently, but you don't got my POV. Brain serotonin. But I need to talk about finally found happiness when my wife changed. I don't even like Jess, but god damn that hurt. I can't even blame him, but being someone who got into Logic in 2017 during the peak of that relationship and watching the videos that they made together, one of which was responsible for one of my favorite Logic quotes of all time. Damn, motherfucker. I still remember that Jess IG story. Bigger than a remote control, am I right? <laughs> Being someone who watched in real time BT2 drop and then almost immediately become dated with them breaking up, which most of the fanbase, including myself, initially thought that that was Jess's decision, and then we found out that it was actually Bobby who filed the divorce. Being someone who still remembers that one comment on Jess's Instagram saying that she looked cuter with the ring on, and her replying being, I agree, to then hear Logic say, Finally found happiness when my wife changed. That is brutal. I was like halfway through the next song and I was still thinking about this line. It is so out of left field for Logic and his whole peace, love, and positivity. But like I said, I can't blame him. Overall, I'd say it's another good song. Probably another one that'll go on the stoner playlist, but... I'm, I'm still just trying to process finally found happiness when my wife changed because Jesus fucking Christ. That is the most brutal fucking thing I've ever heard that man say. Nothing come close to sample the ill shit. Not even self-medication, no matter how good it's sip. The song is about Peter Griffin smoking crack. <laughs> For real though, self-medication is a song that, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan. Now don't get me wrong, Logic's good on it. Redman's verse is also pretty good, especially with those opening bars, goddamn. And then he just comes out of nowhere saying, I learned how to fuck from the babysitter and I... I need to take a break. But the chorus isn't that good, and while I think it's hilarious how Seth MacFarlane is on the song to basically just be the closest thing Logic will ever get to a Frank Sinatra feature, I also just cannot listen to anything musical from Seth MacFarlane that isn't from Family Guy, because his solo career is just Wish.com Sinatra, even down to the album covers. The skit is kind of funny, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't like hearing some of the old songs get mentioned, especially Nothing But A Hero. Goddamn, I love that song. But overall, self-medication is probably my least favorite on the album, if I'm being honest. There's just nothing really here that makes me want to go back to it. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, bitch, I get money like ODB. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, I'm finally eating. Shimmy's a brag rap interpolating the ODB song Shimmy, shimmy, ya yeah, on this nice cold kind of trap, kind of boom bat beat that, while not really being anything special, it's not a skip, not a favorite, but I do enjoy it when it comes on. Logic's verse is probably the weakest on the album, while the Joey feature is pretty good. The beat kinda makes me think of Perfect, which makes me want to say that why I'm fine with Shimmy is because 1. It's a 2.5 minute song, so it actually feels proper and finished, unlike Perfect, and 2. This isn't an album trying to be an under pressure sequel, and it doesn't feel as jarring as Perfect did. Other than that, I honestly don't really have anything else to say about the song. <laughs> Cruising through the borderlands, catch a vibe, fatherhood, my hustle nowadays, I'm making music on the side. Paradise 2 was the third single to the album, was something that made me more intrigued because it's actually pretty good. It's got a jazz rap beat with a really funky bass line and guitar, with Logic going over his current life, being a husband and a father, getting over his need for approval, and where his career is at. Including some pretty good lines, like Lord of the Rings, my bling shine like Elijah Wood, my debut album did better than Reddit said it would, and my personal favorite, retired and came back just like they thought he would. The Nora Jones feature is also pretty good, and when I saw that the single release was labeled Single Virgin, I thought this was going to be an under pressure thing with a whole like second half with more verses. But unfortunately, the second half is taken up by another skit where a gas station gets robbed, and then Castro wants Logic to suck his dick. <laughs> like I said, it's a good song and has pretty much what I wanted from No Pressure. Logic talking about his current life. I don't think it's anywhere near the best on the album, but like I said, pretty good. 
And honestly, I think it might be better than the first Paradise. Come on down. I want the gold. I want the change. I want the. I want the. Come on down. Come on down features Jordan Harris, which it took me a while before I remembered that that's his bodyguard. <laughs> The song opens up with Jordan talking about someone who's willing to sell his soul, which then leads into the chorus with Logic, I assume rapping from the perspective of this person, saying that he wants the world, money, gold, chains, respect, love, fame, and ultimately to be someone that he isn't. Wow, this album even does everybody better. That also goes into the verse where Logic talks about how growing up in the hood means that he's told to just be a thug, sell drugs, and only rap about the money and bitches, no therapy. Which honestly, given what he said on this album, that was probably a little bit of his mentality, but I don't think it's a one-to-one -one of his actual life. So like I said, doing everybody better, because I didn't need Logic to tell me he was rapping from the perspective of somebody else. I was able to figure that out on my own by just listening to the song. The outro from Lil Kiki is also really true and really sad. And honestly, pretty enlightening to me personally, because I'm just a fucking white dude who grew up middle class in the suburbs. I don't know this life. The chorus is also pretty fucking good, I'm not gonna lie. Overall, it's a nice little quick song that's, once again, pretty good. I've been trying to drink less, but I feel like when I drink, I'm at my best. Not a care in the world. No Village Slum is an example of Logic still talking about the past that I think actually works, and at least for me personally, is something that I'm down to listen to because it's also blended with the present, with him talking about his growing up around alcohol, with his parents being alcoholics, and going to AA meetings as a kid. With this being his childhood, even at 30, it still scares him to drink because it reminds him of what he saw, how alcohol can so easily destroy your life, and that being a drug addicted to alcoholic was his fate, but he broke the cycle. It's honestly a hard-hitting song, and I think that it's one of Logic's best verses on the album. It's not a track that I see myself playing often, but that's because I'm currently in a phase of listening to Turn Up Vibey shit, and a song about alcoholism doesn't really fit that. <laughs> But no, yeah, great song. Then we get a skit about Logic and his initial relationship with weed and succumbing to peer pressure, which fits with the meaning of the initial song. And also, I like how Logic delivers this. Just hit the shit, man. Bro, I gotta be on stage in like fucking 40 minutes. I'm not trying to perform in the 10th dimension having panic attacks and shit on stage, <laughs> man. Fuck all that. <laughs> Life was the second single and what made me low-key a little optimistically hyped for the album because I actually like this song. I don't love it and it has gotten old pretty quickly, but I mean, come on, I'm a stoner. I was gonna like this. The beat's got this nice airy vibe to it. The acoustic guitar is at a nice touch. The verses aren't really anything special, but for a stoner track, it doesn't need to be. It's just a nice vibe. I honestly kind of love how Logic performs. Break it down, it out, get high. And the third verse brings in some flows that feel very reminiscent of the old music, along with it ending with interpolating under pressure. Look, man, all I'm saying is that if you're not used to Logic repeating his own lines 100,000 times throughout his discography, that's your fault. <laughs> Overall, a generic stoner track, but easily my favorite out of all the Stony Bob tracks. And also, I like how the music video is basically Clerks 4, with it even being directed by Kevin Smith. That's pretty fucking cool. Oh, 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 overnight. We ain't make it overnight. I have plenty sober nights. Why you think 38.9897 North, 76.9378 West serves as basically the title track to the album, given how the chords point directly to College Park, Maryland, and features the OG rap pack. All three members once again spinning back and forth on this beat that I swear to God samples a chew toy. Once again, a pretty good song to vibe to with Logic, Castro, and Lenny talking about how their life was back then when they were growing up and how they never thought they'd make it here. The Kevin Randolph intro is kind of funny, not gonna lie. The chorus is also pretty catchy, and I kind of like how Logic references that his verse goes all over the place. Also, the way that he says enemies on the chorus is the same way that I plan on saying it in a song that I've been working on before this album even came out, which just tells me this man has made way too much of an influence on me. <laughs> The bass, mostly during the intro, also sounds a tiny bit of deep cover, but maybe that's just me. Other than that, kinda don't have anything else to say. I like it. Ayo, ayo, I'm just trying to lay low. I don't give a fuck about what y'all talk about in any- Ayo is yet another nice little vibe track that'll most likely go in the stoner playlist, and the first thing that I feel like I have to talk about is that knocking Doors Down sample which was used for addiction. Now in my no pressure review, I said that the sample pissed me off when I first heard it because it sounded like nostalgia bait. And to be fair, that was also with the context of it being on an under pressure sequel released after his two worst albums. When it comes to the sample being used on this, to be honest, I'm fine with it. Call me a hypocrite all you want, that's fine, that's valid. 
I was gonna make a whole point about how this was chopped up a little bit in comparison to Addiction of Man I Is, but then I found out it wasn't, so I have no way of defending myself. I don't know, man. It just hits different. <laughs> Logic's verse is pretty good, and so is Bun B, but I personally like Bun B's more solely because it reminds me of Chip the Rapper's verse on Kid Cudi's Higher, and that is a go-to smoking track. The only negative I have to say about the track is the chorus. It doesn't entirely ruin the song, but it just feels a bit too repetitive for my liking. Other than that, good song. Took a light year. Lightyear is such a fantastic outro track, and the first time since Under Pressure that I've been fine with a long Logic song. Like that 9 minute title track, I will listen all the way through from the start to the end, including all the voicemails because the verses are solid and the instrumentation is always slightly changing, that there's not a single moment I don't enjoy the song. But I've never really cared about the Incredible True Stories title track, or Africarian, or Last Call, or Obediently Yours, and while Sayonara did get me a little emotional in retrospective, it's never really had any replay value for me. Lightyear on the other hand. Holy god damn. <laughs> we start the song off with Logic talking about how he'll never change, he'll never do it for the money, he'll never do a radio song, and if he does, then that's the day that his shit will be whack and he would have sold out. Just like Lightsabers, this initially came across as the hypocritical shit that I was so tired of hearing until that interlude kicks in, and Logic is basically talking to his younger self and laughing at that shit, to then go into this giant ass verse where he once again admits that he sold out and going into depth on why. Doing so for the money and so his family will be good. That his children wouldn't have to grow up in poverty and now that he's got the money and that fridge is full, he's back to doing his old school rap shit. That he used the radio friendly song to try to spread PLP, thinking that he could save the world but had to come to terms that he can only just affect it and that he doesn't regret it because he's fulfilled that dream that he had as a kid. He also admits to being wrote off in 2019, which again, that inner mind of young Artanis is screaming right now. <laughs> There's also that line about how the hunger is gone because he doesn't have to prove himself anymore, which, I mean, yeah, I kind of knew that already, but I was looking at the post Under Pressure albums as Logic succeeded, so he just got lazy. But now after hearing the song, and I mean the whole album as well, I understand what happened and that he still has the skill and the talent to bring out good shit. He just got tired and instead copped the bag for himself, friends, and family before coming back to it. And to see an artist admit that is pretty fucking cool. I mean, I grew up with hearing my dad talk about Metallica and the Black Album and how they went more mainstream and how they're now lazy. And as a teenager listening to this while simultaneously watching Logic's career quickly fall, growing a dislike for 1-800 being so poppy sounding, or all the pop moments on YS4, or everything about Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, I ended up just adapting that same mindset. Like when Logic says 2019 I got wrote off, that's true even for my case. Like I wrote Logic off after Cody M and swore I'd never give him a single cent again like my dad did with Metallica. But then No Pressure came out and he said he was retiring so I said fuck it and bought the Logic poster that I always wanted and put all the songs back into my playlists. <laughs> My videos are all about my opinion and personal feelings towards the things that I'm talking about, and Logic is one of those very rare artists that I have such a massive connection to that spans across multiple years and multiple stories. So getting a song like this, I don't know the words to describe how I feel. Now don't get me wrong, this doesn't excuse Cody M for me, because I'm still bothered by the fact that the promotion for that album was straight up just fucking lying, and how Logic still tries to slither out of that by now saying it was a social experiment, but it still puts the past few years into a completely different perspective for me. There's also the end of the track after an interlude with Lucy Rose and Steve Blum in a skit between Logic and Lenny where he talks about fearing being put into a box, where Logic sings over an acoustic guitar about how he wants to just be himself. And speaking from someone who didn't like Supermarket, I actually kind of like this part. Yeah, it's got that indie pop feel that's a bit of a turnoff for me personally, but with a bit of a J in me, it's a nice vibe and the actual lyrics are nice. It is a damn good closing track to a damn good album. Will I make it? I don't know. From the bottom of my heart, I swear to God, I gotta blow. This for every College Park feels really weird to have. <laughs> Like I've said before many times, I'm a fan of the mixtapes. 
all five of them. I'm a fan of Under Pressure. And then I personally think the only good thing he released after that was BT1. I thought No Pressure and Vinyl Days were all right, but nothing that I really liked. And then College Park just, like I said, feels like a matured version of those mixtapes. This honestly, in my opinion, feels like a better sequel to Under Pressure than No Pressure did. This is the first Logic album in years that I've liked this many tracks on. I have never loved listening to a Logic album as much as I have since I first got into him in 2017. And just given all the thoughts I've had on his career and the music over the past few years and all the shit I've said in the past, hearing this just puts me in a completely different perspective. I mean, to be fair, Sayonara started that, but this continued it, and I mean, if this is gonna be the level of quality that we get in the future now that Logic's independent, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I'm looking forward to it. I give College Park, eh? And as always, tracklist ranking goes, Self-Medication, Cruising Through the Universe, Wake Up, Red Pill for Elf, Clone Wars 3, Incipio, Playwright, Paradise 2, AO, Come On Down, Shimmy, High Life. This one's a little tricky to place because, like I said, it got pretty old quick, but I still like it. 38.98, 97 North, 76.93, 78 West, Village Slum, Light Year, Gaithersburg Freestyle, and finally, at number one, Lightsabers. Do keep in mind that this is a bit of a rough ranking because I feel about the same for a lot of the songs, but yeah, that's my thoughts on College Park, Logic's best album since Under Pressure. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. subscribe and please